How does every MMA fan feel when you mention the name Vitor Belfort? First of all, respect and admiration. His spectacular fights are seen by the third generation of fans, and he can rightly be called a legend of mixed martial arts. In one of his interviews, the question was, how much the sport has changed your life? Belfort replied, for as long as I can remember, I've always dreamed of success in sports. And the Bible says, you reap what you sow. And he reaped a lot. Titles, popularity, and eternal legacy in some of MMA's best knockouts. In this video, we will show what Vitor Belfort sowed to achieve his success. Let us introduce Belfort as an invincible fighter and recall the rise of the career of a powerful drummer and technical grappler who earned the nickname The Phenom. Vitor was born on April 1, 1977 in Brazil's second largest city. Born on April Fool's Day, Belfort's future turned into the pride of Rio de Janeiro. He grew up in a wealthy family and lived in a prestigious area. But even there, he got into bad company and got in touch with drug dealers. The father of the future champion in his youth was a member of the Brazilian volleyball team and constantly tried to integrate an active son into the sport. What sport did Vitor not like in his youth? Volleyball, football, swimming, and even motorcycle sports. Belfort began to engage in martial arts at the age of eight. His dream was to become a police officer who would be able to fight, so he studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at Carlson Gracie High School. At the age of 16, Belfort became the champion of Brazil, and at age 17, he received a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The physique and tenacity of this young Brazilian talent became ideal for mastering the more rigid Carlson Gracie Jiu-Jitsu model with elements of Valley Tudo. This skill base was brought from Belfort, the original mixed martial arts fighter, which became popular in the early 1990s in the United States. In 1993, California businessman Art Davey and Carlson's cousin Hoyan Gracie hosted the first Ultimate Fighting Championship tournament. The growing popularity and spectacle of the UFC prize pool attracted a representative of the Gracie clan and his students. Carlson moved with his team to the United States and eventually formed his Brazilian top team. Belfort and his mentor decided to participate in the UFC tournament to improve percussion skills for his upcoming debut. Coach Al Stankiewicz was invited to prepare Oscar de la Hoya for the 1992 Olympics. Al said Brazilians had high stamina and quick hands. A mixture of tough jiu-jitsu by Gracie and Stankiewicz's boxing technique created a ready-made MMA fighter and a future champion. Belfort made his professional mixed martial arts debut in October 1996 at Super Brawl 2. His rival was American John Hess, nicknamed the Giant with Attitude. Belfort went under the name Victor Gracie. The fight ended in 12 seconds. After the gong, Belfort immediately holds a successful takedown and shows his powerful ground and pound. About 20 blows sent the Giant into a knockout. This was to be the debut of the future champion and John Hess never again made it into the octagon, ending his career with a record of 1-1. One one. After such a spectacular debut, Vitor Belfort was awarded a UFC contract. He had four months to prepare for the next tournament, where he gave his best and believed he could be victorious. The UFC 12 tournament was held in February 1997 where 19-year-old Vidor competed in the semifinals against Trey Telegman, an American who was 30 pounds heavier than Vidor. Belfort immediately occupied the center of the octagon. After some brief reconnaissance, Vidor dealt a series of blows. After Belfort's unsuccessful attempt at a takedown, the opponents exchanged a series of blows to the head. Commentators immediately noticed the rapidity of the Brazilian's hands. Belfort beat more precisely and faster. Under this hail of blows, the opponent had to descend onto the deck of the octagon. Once in this dormant position from above, Belfort dealt dozens of finishing blows with his left elbow, and Telegman surrendered. 
The two-time United States Karate Champion received a serious cut under the eye and refused to continue the fight. After this victory, Belfort received his official nickname, The Phenom. That same evening, Belfort made contact with Minnesota fighter Scott Ferrazzo, nicknamed Pitbull. Scott the Pitbull Ferrazzo! The Brazilian was the first to attack, and the second direct blow to the jaw sent the American to a knockdown. The Phenom rushed after Ferrazzo, who had collapsed onto the canvas, to finish him off. The American quickly recovered and first took Vitor's hand, but then gave up his back. In the rear position, Vitor fed Ferrazzo with side blows to the back of the head and the jaw. Pitbull began to get lost and the referee stopped the fight, which officially only lasted 43 seconds. After that, he wouldn't let go of Vitor's leg for another 10 seconds, confirming his tenacious nickname. Interestingly, one of the commentators of this fight was the fighter Tank Abbott, whom Belfort was set to meet in his next match. Belfort became the youngest UFC heavyweight winner. Almost four months later, Belfort was again locked in the octagon cage with American David Tank Abbott at UFC 13. With a record of 10 and 4, fans still loved Abbott very much for the spectacle of his fights. He justified his nickname and went constantly forward at the enemy. This fight was no exception, and Tank, without any foresight, attacked Belfort. The Brazilian immediately transferred the American to the stalls, but could not hold this position. And he wound up on his back after a failed attempt at a submission. Vita rose quickly to his feet and shook Abbott slightly with a straight left to the head. The men clashed in the blade, showing each other with blows to the hull. But the Phenom was faster, and breaking out of the blade, cut down the American on the floor. And then, he did not let go. Taking the dominant position from the back, Belfort inflicted a dozen of lateral blows to the back of the head, and Big John McCarthy had nothing left to do but to stop this beating. In 53 seconds, Belfort defeated Abbott with a technical knockout of the formidable tank. It was the first time that this American came up to his opponent and shook his hand as a sign of respect. Interestingly enough, Abbott was the first fighter to wear MMA gloves that became traditional in the UFC. In late December of that year, Belfort set out to conquer Japan. At the first UFC event held in Japan, the Brazilian fought American wrestler and judoka Joe Charles. Vitor was announced as a member of the Valley Tudo style, a more bloody form of MMA invented in Brazil. The 20-year-old Vitor battled his former sparring partner, who is 18 years older than him. Charles, nicknamed the Ghetto Man, started first with his low kicks, but the Brazilian almost immediately earned a takedown. Vitor moved quickly into the full mount, but lost position, trying to get out on the lever of the elbow. The fighters in turn were on top or down. The advantage in the stalls shifted from one to the other. After a bad guillotine, Charles was back on the guard. The Phenom took his back and went out to the chokehold from behind. But the American endured and tried to come out with this painful hold. Vitor deftly pulled himself out of the grip and soon stepped onto the lever of his elbow. Charles surrendered instantly. Vitor raised a wave of criticism and suspicions that the fight was arranged, as Belfort did not strike a single blow during the fight and Charles surrendered suspiciously. Vita refuted all suspicions and rumors. On October 16, 1998, the UFC hosted the first tournament in Brazil. Performance at home was very important for the Phenom, but against him came compatriot Vanderlei Silva, for whom victory was also paramount. This fighter in Brazil was given the nickname Mad Dog because of his aggressive style. Silva twice won the Brazilian Thai Boxing Championship with his features, his knees and elbows. 
This fight was his debut in the light heavyweight and became a trademark in the subsequent career of the Phenom. Silva occupied the center of the octagon and began a standoff with low kicks. At the next attack, Vitor caught the opponent's left hand and a combination of a dozen direct blows from two hands knocked out his countrymen in 44 seconds, and he could not boast about his skills in Muay Thai. This hurricane combination is present in the selection of the best knockouts and highlights for the popular MMA public. The next four victories Belfort scored in another promotion to the applause of Japanese fans. In those years, the MMA operation Pride, which was based in Japan, grew and gained prestige. The managers of the organization certainly offered a good contract to Team Phenom. After treating some injuries, he focused on training again and secured a winning streak under the Pride banner. In June 2000, at the Pride 9 tournament, Belfort faced Gilbert Ivel, a Dutch fighter named the Hurricane. This Dutch kickboxer in his previous eight fights lost only once. Right at the start of the first round, Belfort landed two direct strikes to the opponent, who fell to the canvas. He was immediately on top, but Gilbert closed the guard and pinned the Brazilian to himself, blocking all blows. This position passed the whole first round, where Vitor treated the Dutchman's body with short blows. There were several flare-ups, where the Phenom broke out of the grip and inflicted mostly sliding but strong blows. At one point, Ivel suffered a cut and a bruise under his right eye. By the end of the 10 minutes, both fighters were breathing heavily. The second round began with a Dutch middle kick, but Belfort immediately transferred Ivel to the canvas and was again in full guard. The fight followed the first round scenario. The Dutchman, lying on his back, grabbed his opponent's neck and pressed against him, while Vitor tried to break out of the grip and inflict more precise blows. But these stalls were more passive than the first round, so three separate times the referee raised the fighters up, but Belfort each time immediately transferred the Dutchman to the stall. And in this vein, the duel was decided by the judges, where Belfort won by unanimous decision. In late summer 2000, at the next Pride 10 tournament, Belfort again entered the ring to face Japanese fighter Daihiro Matsui. In total, the Japanese had seven fights under his belt and only one win. Vitor was confident that Matsui could move quickly, but the fight reached the judge's decision again. For the first few minutes, the fighters stomped in front of each other, and no one dared to hit first. Daihiro was constantly changing racks, and Vitor was a little pressed in his right-hand stance. The Japanese fighter jumped at the opponent's feet, but the Phenom skillfully defended against the takedown It was behind the opponent's back. After a series of blows to the head and body from behind, the Brazilian sat in full guard and continued to break the blocks of the Japanese fighter. Matsui at first was able to knit his hands and block the blows, but Belfort gave several accurate blows to the head. This allowed the Brazilian to open a guard and take the opponent's back. Then Vitor inflicted several blows with his hands and a knee to the head, causing Matsui to bleed from the nose. Matsui whistled on his back and tried to reach an armbar. But once again, Belfort was in a dominant position from behind, hitting the head sideways until the gong sounded. 
Round 2 began the same way as Round 1. Both fighters dared not attack first, leading the referee to warn both of them for passivity. Vitor was the first to decide and threw himself at the opponent's feet. Quickly transferring to the stall, it was Matsui who quickly closed the guard. Once again, the Japanese fighter blocked the blows and grabbed the neck to prevent himself from getting hit. Belford inflicts many blows to the head, but they are all short and not very strong. By the end of the round, the Phenom had increased the attack speed and improved his ground and pound. The fight ended in the parterre by the sound of the gong. It was a dominant performance, and the judges unanimously gave the victory to Vitor Belfort. On March 25th, 2001, the Phenom again appeared at the Pride 13 ring. This time, Belfort's rival was American Bobby Southworth, who was on a winning streak of three fights. Boss in his last couple fights against Doug. The American Kickboxing Academy came out swinging in the opening seconds and threw the first straight, but immediately came across the Brazilian's counterattack from a series of hand blows. After a brief reconnaissance, Vitor set up a takedown. On the ground, the Brazilian tried to dominate, but in the end, the American closed his guard. He constantly knit his opponent's hands and prevents him from developing his ground and pound. The American sweep, however, was his fatal mistake. Belfort took his back, tucked his left arm underneath the chin, and at the same time took a back-mounted position and began to strangle him. A few seconds later, and Southworth tapped in surrender. In the fifth minute of the first round, Belfort wins through submission. The fighters hugged it out after the match as a token of respect. It is an interesting fact that Bobby Southworth would be the first strike force light heavyweight champion in the future. Two months later, at the next Pride tournament, Pride 14 in Japan, Belfort confronted American Heath Herring, who lost only once in his last nine fights. He was very popular with the Japanese public because of his unique hairstyles and hair color, as well as the cowboy hat that he wore when he entered the ring. His nickname was the Texas Crazy Horse, which hinted at his aggressive conduct in the fight. Vitor wanted nothing more than to remove his head and all that red hair. It was a heavyweight fight, and Belfort seemed visually small compared to the American. The round began with his low kick reconnaissance, but Belfort caught a foot and successfully conducted a takedown. Herring closed the guard and tried to block the Brazilian's ground and pound. The American tried to break out of the stall and was threatened with a guillotine by the Brazilian, but ultimately his neck was released. After an unsuccessful attempt to strangle Herring, Vitor himself was now in full guard. The Phenom blocked all attempts to strike and Heath decided to change positions. He successfully took a position on his chest, but the Brazilian swept and gave his back. Holding his left hand to the hull, Herring used his right hand to smash Belfort's defenses. There were also attempts to refill the legs and prepare a chokehold. Belfort's leg had a bandage on it, and Heath would hit it on purpose, but Vitor turned abruptly on his back and closed the guard. He blocked the American's hands, trying to minimize his attacks, and then turned the American technically with himself and even found himself in full mount. Then for a few seconds, he was behind Herring, but Herring quickly knocked the Brazilian off his back like the Texas crazy horse we know. Herring invited Vitor to continue the fight in the bar. Heath immediately gets a knee in the head of the Brazilian, but Vitor catches the leg and tries a takedown. Herring defends himself and takes the opponent's back. After several unsuccessful attempts to get out of the suffocating rear, the American lost position, and again Belfort was down in full guard. That was the end of the first 10 minutes. But he, he knows that there are two more five in a round The second round began with Herring's right knee, after which Vitor had a takedown. There it is. Yep. Surprise, surprise. The American managed to climb quickly, but Vitor did not stop trying to move to the stalls. Heath grasped the ropes, for which he received a warning. 
After this middle kick from the American, Belfort had a takedown, but ends up at the bottom. The Brazilian closes the guard and blocks all blows of his opponent. Keith uses some dirty tricks to cover his opponent's mouth with his palm. Seeing that the stall is failing, Herring invites the opponent to continue the fight at the counter. Herring had several takedowns, but did not develop ground and pound until the end of the round. And the third round began with a strong kick from the Brazilian, who continued with a sharp high kick to the head. But Belfort is not lost and conducts a takedown. That was a hard kick. In the course of the active struggle, the positions of the fighters changed, but the Brazilian was always able to take a dominant position. The match was decided by the judges, and Peter Belfort won unanimously. This victory sparked much controversy about the Brazilian's undeserved victory, but Herring decided not to contest it. On June 6, 2003, the Phenom competed at UFC 43 in Las Vegas against American fighter Marvin Eastman, nicknamed The Beastman. Eastman's record was 7-2, and, and in the first fight, he was defeated by the unanimous decision of future UFC champion Quentin Jackson. Eastman first began scouting with these low kicks, but the Brazilian showed good footwork. The Beastman was number one, trying to pull his opponent out, but Belfort remained calm and shot himself with a single kickoff. Marvin rushed into the hull of the Brazilian to attempt a takedown, but Vitor quickly transferred Eastman to the tie clinch, and lightning struck two brutal knees to the head. The American fell, and Vitor finished the fight with a powerful attack. Exactly one minute and seven seconds later, this fight ended. Curly hair and mustache did not prevent the Brazilian from confirming his nickname, the Phenom. At the end of January 2004, Belfort was in a title bout against American fighter Randy Couture, who had serious Greco-Roman wrestling skills. Shortly before the battle, sister Priscilla was kidnapped. It was a great tragedy for the family of this fighter and all of Brazil. He appeared on television to appeal to the kidnappers, searched for a relative with his forces all over Rio de Janeiro, and agreed to hold a duel in honor of his sister. He came out wearing a t-shirt with a picture of his sister and the inscription, Bring Back Priscilla. The first to start was the Couture champion with a combination of left kick and right straight, but stumbled due to this oncoming sideways slide from Belfort. The men clashed with the blade, and it was immediately apparent that the American was closing his eyes and squinting with pain. Big John McCarthy stopped the fight and called a doctor. It turned out that after the counter blow, Couture had problems with the cornea of his eye, and the doctor finally decided to stop the fight. In 49 seconds, Belfort became the UFC light heavyweight champion, but found himself crying over this family tragedy. When Dana White presented him with the belt, his sister's body was still missing. For his next victory, Vitor went to London, where he competed at Cage Rage 14 against French fighter Anthony Rea, nicknamed the Wild Thing. Belfort immediately occupied the center of the octagon, but the fighters were inactive for the first few minutes, and the crowd began to make uncomfortable noises. After two direct blows, Anthony attempted a takedown, but was immediately caught in the guillotine. Vitor could not hold the neck of the enemy, and wound up in full guard. A few moments later, Brazilian had made another attempt at the strangulation with the guillotine, and it seemed that it was the end for the Frenchman, but he had released his neck from the grip. After climbing into the post, Belfort struck a powerful high kick, but it was ultimately blocked. Right after that, there were several headshots with straights and uppercuts. After a prolonged clinch near the net, the fighters exchanged a series of hand blows and low kicks. At the beginning of the second round, Rhea was more active, 
shooting the Brazilian from a distance with legs on all fours. Then Belfort caught the opponent with a counter uppercut and added a knee to the head. In the middle of the round, Belfort delivered another powerful uppercut and knocked out the enemy. The referee intervened in time, thank God, and stopped the fight, preventing the Phenom from finishing off his opponent. Apprentice to Gracie, five-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, winner of UFC 12 heavyweight tournament, UFC lightweight heavyweight champion, and these are just a few titles for Peter Belfort. In the next video, we will continue to remember the career of the Brazilian Phenom. You will see him become the light heavyweight champion at Cage Rage Championships, win the best knockout award five times, become the holder of the UFC knockout record, and receive the prestigious World MMA Award for best knockout of the year. Be sure you don't miss out. If you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. Make sure you hit the like button and press the bell icon to avoid missing our next video. Take care.